Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be hanging out in my sketchbook for a bit and trying out these Pro Marker watercolor markers from Winsor & Newton. I'm pretty excited because Winsor & Newton actually reached out to me and sent me these markers as well as a couple of other supplies, but we're going to be focusing on the markers themselves today. I've always been really interested in watercolor markers because they're, um, you know, soluble with water, so you can use them a little bit more like watercolors, but they're also still markers. So I was always curious if these markers would be for somebody who likes alcohol markers, or for somebody who likes watercolors, or for somebody in between, or somebody who likes all of those things. I was never really sure, so I'm excited to try these out. These are pigment-based watercolor markers, so they vary from other brush markers, other water-soluble brush markers, because they're not dye-based. They use pigments, which generally makes them more light fast, and it affects the way that the paint reacts, too. These markers feature a felt brush tip on one side and a smaller little bullet nib on the other side. The fact that they are pigment based instead of dye based affects not only the light fastness but also how the colors work and react. You're not going to have that same separation of dyes that you do with dye based markers and they're going to spread and blend a little bit more like watercolors. I was kind of hesitant and unsure about these markers when I first did some research on them as I found that some people who used them had trouble blending out or softening out or diluting the color once it was applied to paper. And I found the exact same thing when I first started swatching them. One thing that made a huge difference here is that you'll notice for my swatches I'm using the brush tip side and not the bullet tip. If you use that smaller fine point tip, you're not going to get as much pigment on the paper. While using the brush tip allows for the color to come out and flow a bit more easily, you get a lot more pigment out of that side and it spreads a bit better. Even so, because the brush tip is still a tiny bit abrasive in just the way that markers work, not all of the color is able to be moved around and it varies a lot from color to color as well so they're not all the same like some of the colors like the cadmium red light cadmium red hue i think the cadmium red hue and the black and the prussian blue hue those colors reactivate and spread very nicely where colors like the alizarin crimson the yellow ochre the lemon yellow those colors are kind of difficult to get a bit more color out of them. You can get a little bit, but it's not as much. That doesn't necessarily mean that those colors are worse or not as good. And what I found with supplies like these is it just means that those colors can be used for different purposes. Maybe you want some areas with lighter color, so it's nice to have ones that don't spread as much. And we'll talk more about the differences between the individual colors and how I use these markers in a second. Hopefully you can see some of those differences here, how every color is a little bit different. Some of them it's really easy to get a lot of pigment out of them, some of the colors just stay a lot lighter and you don't get as much color out of them right away. to how I like to use these markers, I really like to fall somewhere between how I would use markers and how I use watercolors. Technically, you can use these more like watercolors in that you could maybe color some color onto a palette, you know, and then just pick it up with a brush. But if I'm going to do something like that, I might as well just use watercolors because it's something I'm more familiar with and I know how they work and then I don't have to open and close a bunch of markers every time I want to do it that way when I could just be using um, regular watercolors out of a pan or a well. 
For these, I like to apply a little bit of color to the page and then blend it out with water. I think using them that way gives the most unique look in a way. So you're looking at it and it looks a lot like watercolors, but there's also some distinctions in brush strokes and the specific marks from the marker that just makes it really unique. Not everyone will use them this way, but because I do, it also means that I'm really focusing on using just one color at a time. Because if you were to maybe try to blend two colors together with the markers, it might dry too quickly or it might dry so fast that you don't really have time to blend out the color. And again, there's so much wiggle room in how to use these colors. You might prefer to use them more just like markers with minimal to no blending out of the color, or you might want to get the pigment out before actually placing it on the paper, like I mentioned before. But for me, the way that emphasizes the uniqueness of these markers best is using them like this. So the colors remain a bit more separated from one another, and there aren't as many mixed in between colors. It's more about mixing on the page, layering the color, and just allowing things to blend together. So I don't usually have, you know, just a straight up bright purple like this, like I do around the eye area of this one. And I usually mix my browns a bit more before painting with them too. So it really just kind of emphasizes the unique experience of these markers. The brush tips are pretty flexible, so you could actually just sketch right with the brush tip, or you could use it for more detailed line work. The felt tips are also kind of firm, so while they do have a lot of flexibility, they're not super, super difficult to control. So there's just so much possibility and opportunity when it comes to how you want to use these markers. A little bit of a disclaimer that I forgot to mention before, while the company did send me these products for free, we were actually working out a plan for Instagram and I chose on my own to make a separate YouTube video about these, so they're not paying me for a YouTube video or anything like that. But I did mention to them that I would make a video about these markers if I thought that it was something that you guys would be interested in. And I am having a lot of fun with these, so I really did want to talk to you guys about them. When it comes to water-based or water-soluble markers that I've used in the past, it's been a while now since I've used them, but I have in the past experimented with the Arteza brush markers as well as the Tombow brush markers. Those are both dye-based, so they work a bit differently, but I had kind of established a similar technique when using those. I like that when you spread these colors out and move the pigment around with water, it feels so much more like watercolors than the other dye-based markers, and that is so much fun. If you're the kind of person who wants to use these a little bit more like watercolors, kind of like what I'm doing, and you're also really detail oriented, so you like to have really specific details and have complete control over your art supplies, you might have to work out a different technique or strategy for using these, or they might not work for you as well. You can't always control how much of the pigment you'll be able to move around once you place it on the page. It's it was definitely a much looser experience for me. I don't have as much control blending these out and moving the pigment around as I do with watercolors, and that just comes from applying that pigment directly to the page.
I wanted to mention also the sketchbook I'm using for the swatches and this painting. It's the Strathmore Watercolor Journal, which I have been using for lots of different things lately. It's actually not my favorite to use for watercolors because it's difficult to layer colors because things lift so easily in the sketchbook, which is exactly why I used it for this practice and for this video because I wanted paper that was going to aid and assist in lifting the color because I knew that that was going to be a fight I was going to have already trying to get the color to move around so I wanted to pair that with a paper that would make lifting and moving the color a little bit easier so that's definitely something to keep in mind this is not a 100% cotton paper so if you are using a paper that stains a little bit more easily or holds on to color you may have a very very different experience with markers like these or if you have tried watercolor markers before and you've had trouble and you're not sure why they're not working for you it's definitely worth trying switching up the paper that you use I'd recommend watercolor paper for these but it's definitely worth experimenting with the specific type of watercolor paper that you use because everything is going to react a little bit differently with these markers I had so much fun painting the sketch that I'm working on here today. There was like an in-between middle phase that I really really liked before I started coloring in the hair and part of me wishes I had just left it right there at that in-between phase because that green went a little bit crazy a little bit wild and I ended up mixing in some red and some other colors to tone that color down but this is definitely super super rainbow skin it's more rainbowy than we've had in a while and that's just because the colors are applied directly by themselves way more than what I've been doing lately so it's really fun just to see how different they look and how different they feel I do think I may have overworked my paper a little bit in the end when it came to this, but it was still a lot of fun. It was a great sketchbook exercise, and I think that these markers could be really fun for building small limited palettes, so focusing on just a couple of these colors. I really like how the blues and the browns blend together, so that burnt umber is really really nice, and that together with the cerulean blue or the prussian blue which is actually those both are based with phthalo blue and and i think the prussian blue has like a black pigment in it as well but yeah i really like the blues and the brown together i think it would be really fun to work with just those and maybe one of the reds so lots of different possibilities with these. Let me know if you guys have tried watercolor markers before, if you've tried pigment based markers or dye based markers. I really want to hear what you think about these and if you think it's something that you would like. As always, a huge, huge thank you to my patrons and my YouTube members. Um, patrons, you can find a high resolution digital download of this over on Patreon that I will be sharing very soon, and anyone can check out either of those two platforms if you're interested in supporting this channel even more than you already are by just being here. So thank you also for that, for being here. I hope you guys are doing well and that you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye!